Oh my god, hey! Welcome back to my staging YouTube channel. If you're seeing my face for the first time, my name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theatre. I am here this evening, back in London's West End, outside the Gillian Lynn Theatre, where finally, after much coercion and months of anticipation, I will be seeing Angela Webber's Cinderella. I am so excited to go see this show. I am going to be reviewing it for you right here on my YouTube channel, and I cannot wait anymore. Let's go inside and find out what the hell this show is about. Hey, so I just got back from the gala night of Cinderella at the Gillian Lynn Theatre and I've come straight in here to tell you all about it. I have so many thoughts, I honestly need to talk about it straight away or I'm worried I will forget all the details. Before I get into this review, because my ticket was part of the press allocation, I was given this very lovely free souvenir program from Cinderella at the Gillian Lynn Theatre, which because I have too many and I'm just a hoarder for these things, I'm going to immediately give away to one very lucky person on my channel. So all you have to do to be in with a chance of winning this Cinderella souvenir program full of cast bios, lots of lovely rehearsal pictures, lots of lovely write-ups about other shows, about this show. All you need to do is make sure you have liked this video, subscribed to my channel, I will be checking, and commented down below with hashtag Mickey Joe giveaway. If you would like an extra chance to enter, head over to my Twitter and Instagram pages, also at Mickey Joe Theatre, where you can retweet and share posts for an extra entry. More details about this competition and when it will be closing are in the video description down below. Best of luck, I will be announcing it in the comments section very soon. So I'm very aware that this is something people have wanted me to talk about for a very long time. Ever since last year I said I wasn't sure if I was even going to go and see the show. That was the first time I had spoken about it, since then I have made a few more videos sort of speculating about the casting and then recently reacting to the cast recording. After listening to the cast recording, I became so critically interested in and fascinated by the show that I just had to know. And then early preview reports from some people who I knew who had been to see it were saying very different things to each other and then the mainstream newspaper critics went in and saw the show when it reopened in August and said a completely different thing to what I'd heard from a lot of other people so you know when the word of mouth is polarizing I have to get myself to that theatre and find out for myself and I really do want to say a big thank you to the PR team at Storyhouse PR who actually invited me to the gala night for this show because you know I've been been critical about this show from the offset on YouTube and I think that shows a lot of integrity to invite me regardless to the gala night um, and sort of not prescribe what I'm going to say about the show to just invite me and let me say my piece and review it as fully and honestly as I am going to now. So knowing how many of you are really big fans of this show and how many comments I've seen from people who just really love it and are really hoping I have the same reaction, I do want to say first of all that this is just my opinion. Everything that I say on my YouTube channel is my opinion. You would assume that goes without saying, but the last time I came on here and talked about a show I didn't like very much, the comments section got very personal very quickly. I think people get very offended when 
my opinion of a show does not correspond exactly with theirs. And it's okay to be annoyed by my opinion, but you're not going to change my opinion by commenting down below and telling me that I don't know anything and you have no interest in anything that I have to say. Because if you're watching my YouTube channel in the first place, the chances are that you do have an interest in what I'm saying because you clicked the video. So before I start talking about it, let's all remember how subjective theater is, that it's great for you guys to have your own opinions. You may love this show, you may hate this show, my opinions are my own, and that's that. That being said, let's talk about Cinderella at the Gillian Lynn Theatre. This is the question. So, I've been very clear that I initially wasn't excited about this show, and the cast recording didn't fill me with faith that it was going to be amazing and something I loved. It did have me intrigued. And the main adjective I was hearing from people was that it was odd, that it was weird. And sometimes weird is great. There's a lot of weird musical theatre that I really dig and really enjoy. Weird is not bad. By the time that I was actually sitting down to watch this show, there was a lot of anticipation. There was so much hype around it, and people have been asking me and asking me for weeks, Am I going to see it? Please can I review it? And I had really built it up and I thought it did have a lot of potential to live up to and I was starting to get more and more excited that this could be a really great show. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. I think what this show is beyond anything else is a bit meh. It does have a lot of potential that I think it struggles to live up to. More so than anything else, I feel like it misfires consistently. This evening I watched scene after scene where one thing wasn't quite right and it just threw off the rhythm of it and the whole show never really finds its footing in that way. Straight down the middle, I would give this a three star rating. By this point, my full three star write up review of this is also available on my blog over at mickeyjotheatre.co.uk or if it's not, it will be very soon. I think I'm going to do another more extended video where I explain really why I thought there was fault in this show and areas where it could be improved and issues I had with characters and with plot because there are quite a few little nitpicky things I could talk about and there's not the time in this video but I do think I owe you guys an explanation of why I had a lot of issues with it. There's just a lot of inconsistencies with characters and with scenes and with motivations and it's a strange story. I think a lot of its problems lie in its book. I think there are also changes I would make to the score. You know, there were moments where the song was great and it was let down by a sort of half-hearted direction and then, then there were other moments where the staging was really great, but it was let down by repetitive music or lyrics that weren't that interesting. Just I felt there were never really any moments where everything came together to produce just great theatre moments. I was never gripped by this show. I was constantly watching and thinking, oh, that's now that's happening. And now that's I was more quizzical than anything else. I also think that for an Andrew Lloyd Webber show, it really lacked panache and punch. There were so many moments where people would just sort of stroll on casually or, or stroll off. I wanted more buttons and bookends and I wanted things to open and close and, you know, have more structured scenes. The entrances into songs, these songs just kept happening out of nowhere. Like Carrie would walk on and just start singing the song. I wanted better roots into these songs, either musically or via the script. I think there's a lot of issues with the script that I could talk about and I will talk about in another video. But the creative elements never came together for me in a way that was really satisfying. You know, it didn't make me laugh, it didn't make me cry, I didn't root for many of these characters. By the end I rooted for this relationship between these two but only because they'd sung such beautiful songs about it. That's what really works is when they are on stage alone singing about their feelings, you know, Cinderella and Sebastian alike, but that also happens too often. The fact that Cinderella has so many ballads and they are all staged the same way except for Bad Cinderella, just with her singing alone on a stage. It gets samey and you get bored of it. Now the cast, I cannot fault. Across the board, spectacular, huge talents. A lot of people I was already a huge fan of, people I've seen in loads of shows before. This is Carrie Hope Fletcher at her best. She leads this company so well. You know, she characterizes Cinderella perfectly. I absolutely understand who this Cinderella is. You can tell everything fits so comfortably in her voice. Having heard her sing a score that 
you know, was not the best fit for her range before in something like Heather's. This is something that fits so perfectly within her voice and is so much more impressive for that. It really makes a huge difference having just that right song for your voice. I'm also going to shout out Mike Hamway, who was understudying the role of Sebastian at this performance. I know he's gone on a few times already. He went on in early previews. He was really fantastic, just super endearing, super engaging. I really liked his characterization, although at no point did it make sense to me why everyone was like, oh, he's so weaselly and unattractive because that could not be further from the truth. I was in awe of his strange Billy Elliot angry dance moment. I have no idea what that's doing in the show, but I enjoyed it. His Only You Lonely You was probably the longest period of extended applause. It's a fantastic song and he did just such a great job of it. We have to talk about Victoria Hamilton Barrett as the stepmother. You know, she I think is the most tonally at home in this show by leaning into the pantomime madness of it all, but she's almost too a different show to everyone else. The way she gets laughs just by like doing this thing with her leg and this strange little walk. I'm, I, I was looking, trying, I was like, I don't know how you're getting these laughs, but I'm laughing and everyone around me is laughing and it's objectively funny. She just, the, her physicality was just so funny and this like drag queen voice that she puts on. She was really easy to watch. Anytime she was on stage, you know, the pace really picked up and it became a lot more engaging. Rebecca Traherne, I also loved. I'm a huge Rebecca Traherne fan and I was nervous for her in this role because from the offset, you know, I, I thought she might have been miscast in this show. She had done the workshop and I do have my suspicions that she was drafted in after previous people cast in this role had left the show. And while this is not a role where she gets to show off her incredible vocal talents, she gets to do comedy and she gets to play up this shtick and she's very funny and she's very watchable. And she looks fantastic. Everyone looks fantastic in those costumes, I will say. The costuming is stunning. Although the stepmother costumes, you know, there was just always something weird about them. Like the slit was in the wrong place or it was too high and I felt like she was going to fall over her dress the entire time. Or she had one that was like looked like a black thing zipped halfway down with feathers at the waist and it was, it was odd. I don't know if they were meant to be odd, but they were odd. The other standout for me was Georgina Castle. I mean, her and Laura Baldwin, both hilarious as the steps sisters, but just the material that Georgina Castle gets, especially in the second act, she really comes to life and she's a really funny character. I really enjoyed that. Okay, this section is fully going to have some spoilers. I mean, thinking about, have I already spoiled the show? I don't think I've spoiled the show, but now I, now I will be. So Only You Lonely You, like I said, is a really strong moment in this show. Huge applause afterwards. It's a beautiful song. Mike Hamway did a great job with it. Bad Cinderella is another great one for me. I really enjoyed the staging of that, the way she's singing and their slow motion, like dragging her across the floor, the way they use the revolve, the way that they use the ensemble and the choreography of it. If that had continued that creative energy throughout the show, I'd have honestly been a lot happier. I Know I Have a Heart is also a really great one. What lets this down for me is the orchestration goes a little bit ABBA. You know, it's a little bit too Euro poppy for what should be an emotional outpouring. I also want him to be on stage with her at that moment because she's singing it at him. But once again, she is alone singing a ballad like she is the entire show. But I do think the highlight is the ball sequence. Now here is the spoiler, because if you don't know, something very special happens in this show with the front section of stalls. So there's revolves on the stage that they use, but also the front sort of semicircle portion of the stage stage is in itself on a giant revolve with the front section of stalls that all turns around. So the stall seats move with the stage, it all rotates and the audience end up on the other side of the stage. The stage moves around so it's in the middle and it becomes in the round. It's very clever, it's very cool, it's very like you're on a ride at Disneyland. It's definitely a unique theatrical component and it got a lot of applause when it started and then also when it stopped and they'd moved the whole way around. It does make sight lines slightly challenging but mostly they seem to avoid this being a problem. But that whole sequence was definitely a highlight for everyone in the auditorium. People lost their damn minds clapping at that. And I did too, I'm not gonna lie. Like, even though I try to be like an aspiring, astute theatre critic, I am at times just a caveman and will clap at fun things like that because it's, it's, it's cool. The seats moved. That's, that's cool. 
theatre going experience was good. It was a gala night, which always means a certain level of stress because, you know, there's celebrities arriving. Gemma Collins was there. I think Sunita was there. So it was busy in the Gillian Lynn Theatre and there were decent queues to get round anywhere into the bar and leaving the dress circle at the end. What I will say, piece of advice for you, is make sure you get the right door from your ticket. I had a nightmare because I, I saw that we were door six and I was like, oh, I can go in door three and just move around the circle. No, no, there is no way to get from one side of the circle to the other without going through a row of people. That was a terrible mistake that I made. Get the right door the first time. My advice to you. They had a bunch of merch on sale at the merch kiosk. They had various different t-shirt designs. I saw mugs, I saw key rings, all sorts of things with that Cinderella logo on. Have a look, see if there's something you want to get for yourselves. They also had socks, but as far as I saw, no fancy glass shoes. So if you're holding out for those, I don't know what to tell you. From what I hear, they're very painful. I mean, evidently loads of people are enjoying this show. I think a lot of young people seem to be really enjoying the show, which I always love. Anything that gets young people excited about theatre, I'm always going to champion that, even if it's something that, you know, doesn't resonate with me as much, because I think young people getting excited about theatre, getting involved in theatre is always a great thing. I feel like a lot of the Heathers fans will really enjoy this. Any fans of Carrie Hope Fletcher, of which there are so many of you, because she is such a huge talent, you're going to enjoy this show because she has a lot to do in it. It's really a role that's very close to her in terms of what she represents and what she stands for as a person and she gets to sing so many great songs in it. This may be like the new hype thing for the Wicked generation. Again, a lot of fans of Six because of just like the way a lot of these songs are written. There's great female belting if you're into that. Who isn't? Great one for families, great one for kids, great one for taking kids to as parents because they will enjoy it. They will enjoy the pretty scenery. They will enjoy that the thing moves. They will enjoy the Cinderella fairy tale Disney concept. It's not Disney, but you know what I mean. But it's also subversive enough that there's humor that will go over their heads that you can enjoy as an adult. You know, there's something in it for everyone. This is also a really great musical for LGBT plus representation. Now, again, this is going to be a little bit of a spoiler. So right at the end, Prince Charming comes back and they've been hyping him up the entire show as this symbol of virility and masculinity. He comes back and announces that his disappearance was actually staged because he was being forced into a wedding with someone he didn't really love. And he's now announcing that he's going to now get married to the love of his life, who is a man. And it's a big deal. And yet it's not a big deal at the same time because the queen's just like, yay, sure, royal wedding, let's make it a gay royal wedding. And everyone's very supportive. The stepmother is briefly against it, but it doesn't really go anywhere. She is more just against the idea that it's going to disrupt a wedding that she had orchestrated. I really enjoy this representation. I think it's very authentic. I like that this character has been established as such a manly man and still comes in and, you know, is in a gay relationship. And that's just synonymous with his character. They sing a whole song about being excited that he's back and that he's out now and he does a dance with the ensemble. You know, you see two men getting married on stage. You see two men kissing on stage. You see this beautiful moment and there's nothing negative about it. So I think that's a really positive thing and a really important step for musical theatre. And given that that's not something that we see very often in mainstream musical theatre, that's definitely something that I feel like we should support as an LGBT plus community. So go and see Cinderella if you want to bask in the love of that moment. So that is a brief overview of my thoughts. If you want a more analytical written review, head over to my blog. If you want to wait and hear about, you know, the things that were holding me back from really enjoying this show, then that video is going to be coming soon as well. Feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I know so many of you are big fans of this show. Please feel free to share what you love about this show down in the comment section, why you enjoy it. But remember, everyone is entitled to their own opinion. That may be the person you're discussing with, that may be you, that may be me. Okay, let's all be friends at the end of the day. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my channel for plenty more content, including maybe some more content about Cinderella. Who knows? There will also be some other reviews of more new musicals coming very soon. Stay tuned. Don't forget to enter the giveaway to win this Cinderella souvenir program by commenting down below. Also, if you'd like to support me as a stagey content creator, head over to patreon.com forward slash Theatre, where for a variety of membership tiers, you can gain access to all sorts of exclusive photo and video content. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For 10 more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey, thanks for watching, have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>